Well, spring is sprunging, <laughs> and it sprung up on me quicker than normal. Like it's usually the way you spend the winter time doodling around the shed, trying to keep warm and trying to get organised. But now, anyway, here we are in spring, and the bloody bees are getting all excited, and there's a few little swarms. We've already caught a couple here, and I just thought, well, we might as well show you setting up to catch some swarms. We're going to head down to the cooler country that's probably another three weeks away before they get excited. And I don't know, I've gone through the swarm catching ideas. I've had the blooming oils and the special, what is it, swarm attractors and doodly ah things you hang in your blooming thing and spreading oil and shit everywhere. And then I've had old boxes sitting around here that I've been cleaning up and the bees seem to like them better. And I realize there's a few disease issues with old boxes, but hell, I don't know. As long as, the, as, long as they've died out from just blooming, getting starved out and not have some crappy bloody foul brood or some shit that's bad. These girls have been obviously overrun with the moths after they passed on. You know, I haven't actually seen any diseases, so my plan is I've got some crappy old boxes that really are out of commission. They've moved to the point where they're sort of on the way out the door. And I figure we're gonna lay them out, catch some swarms, let the swarms be in there until they start laying some brood and then we'll check the brood. And if they're all healthy, we'll put them in some decent boxes and that'll expand our holdings. So, I don't know, free bees, is that, is that what it says? Free bees on your knees. But anyway, we're gonna have a crack. Rightio. So my rough plan, very rough plan it is. We've got these poor unfortunate old boxes that are being out of commission a little bit. And we've got some, whoop, don't mind the lamb's wool. That one's probably not ideal. And we've got some old comb that's still in there. So I figure if we clean up these few wax moths that are all dried up and dead anyway, and then we're gonna take the box down to our swarm catching area. And they're all by themselves. So I figure if we catch a few swarms and we keep them by themselves until we make sure they're all good, seems like a plan to me. I don't know, of course, there's a thousand different options and a thousand different things to talk about out there in the internet world, but that's my plan and it seems to work, so we'll have a go. So we'll get down to this box down here. Oh, and we'll give it a bit of a clean out. Get rid of these crappy frames and clean this crap out the bottom. <laughs> that might not be real good. <laughs> I don't think we'll catch any bees in this box. This is actually a blooming honey carrying box. Ah oh, man! Cut! What was that? What's that sticker? Don't follow me, I'm going fishing. Don't follow me, I'm going bee catching. <laughs> I should have that I should have a sticker on me truck, shouldn't I? Talking about stickers. Hey, you wanna see something cool? I'll be back. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> the house is this way. <sighs> I suppose does that mean you're kinda of getting famous when you get fan mail? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, young Casey sent me this letter, which I thought was pretty cool. It says, Dear Bushby Man, we watch your YouTube and think you're excellent. We are first time beekeepers with our first hive. Being only two weeks old, I have found this car sticker and thought of you. Straight away, hope you like it. From your mate, Casey Allen from Newcastle. That's in, South, that's in New South Wales. That's some serious country. Check this shit out. This is gonna to have to go on the truck. <laughs> so I reckon we'll have to put that on the truck. <laughs> no guarantees if you send me a sticker that'll end up on the truck, but hell, you never know. I'm all up for a bit of fan mail. If you have, if you can be bothered, 1127 Loxton, send me something. <laughs> I would be amazed, this is the bit that amazes me about this beekeeping carry on, is it just takes so damn long. The other day I was down <laughs> checking out some bees that I'm working on, and next thing you know the sun's going down and I'm thinking, man, oh shit, it's an hour drive to get home. Just as well the lad was cooking dinner, otherwise I would have been in all sorts of strife. But it's very therapeutic though, keeping bees. So if, you, if you've got a... Well, no, I shouldn't say if you've got an anxiety problem, you should get some bees because it just depends. But if you just get a few of them, they're very therapeutic and you get lost in what you're doing. And there's every box you open, there's another challenge. So it's like, poof. yeah. Anyway, like I've said before, I think I've fallen in love with these ladies. It's kind of crazy. Not only have I got all you internet adoring fans, I've got several hundred thousand adoring bees. So 
you know, I guess that makes me popular. Anyway, I digress. Let's scrape some shit off the top of here. So some of these boxes are a little bit beyond repair, so I figure they're going to make good catching boxes. Although this box is going to be a bad representation at all. Our first box had no hole. And this box, you've got a little bit too many holes. <laughs> so it's like, hey, wait on. We'll go and get a different one. Oh my goodness me. That's going to have to go in the repair room. That's not even good for a swarm catching box, that thing. Otherwise the swarm will go in there and the blooming ants will come and eat them. So just as well we've got a couple to pick from. Come over here. <laughs> so we'll give this one a try and see what we can find. Ah! Right, that's looking a bit more respectable. Beautiful. Now, if you were... Ah, if I was using this... Like, I've got some that I'm actually fixing up. And then obviously you clean them up, give them a paint, scorch out the inside, get it all nice and happy. But it seems a little pointless if I'm going to put old frames in this old box. Seems a bit pointless to get too carried away cleaning them up. And for some reason, if you have an old box, it, they seem to love it better than if you have a beautiful clean white box with all the lovely fresh paint. Because they come along and they go, oh, that doesn't smell like a bee. And you know, bugger off to somewhere else. They end up in a tree somewhere. So the plan is we get our old box and we scrape all the moths and crap out of it. Now, this isn't going to be their forever home, by the way. Now, these have been a bit out of commission for a little while and they've been um, had their moth treatment so we haven't if you've got an old box and it's full of moth eggs don't do this bit all right you're just gonna you still want to burn them out or gas them out make sure or stick them in a the freezer that's always good if you've only got a couple to do it's just to make sure all your moths are dead because the last thing you need is the blooming moths to eat the rest of the crap that's in here mind you they don't normally turn up unless they've got some brood to eat so but you don't want to set the girls up for failure so you want to make sure that they've actually got a reasonable advantage what else do I need to tell you? Because this is this is probably not in the in the actual Australian beekeeping guidebook, but anyway. Hey, don't ring me up and tell me what a bad man I am. It's all right. I, like I said, this is not their forever home. This is only just to make them feel like they could find a home. How's that dance go? Something like that, isn't it? <laughs> Rightio! I was just thinking the challenges of filming. I don't know whether we've turned it up the other way or not. Anyway, we've got a couple of frames that I like to put in the middle. So the idea is, of course, when the scout bee turns up, she comes in there and she fossicks around and goes, Ooh, this looks like a house where bees live. I'll go back home and tell everybody else in the swarm that we've found a new house. And push, in they go. Because in the wild, of course, I don't know if you've ever noticed that when you're wandering through the forest and you go to a bee tree, it's not always the same bees that were in there last summer because quite often they'll die out during the season and then a new swarm will come in and they do the same thing. They go, oh, here's some stuff already established. So my theory is to recreate nature in a way. Anyway, that's my idea and it seems to work. Like I said, I've tried a lot of other things. I've tried a whole heap of stuff and new bee boxes, new blooming foundation, fancy ass swarm catchy blooming stuff and I don't know, whatever the scents were, lemongrass, and put some lemongrass in there one time. That was fun. You'd have a crappy old bee box there that you that was sitting there doing nothing, and it was all a bit beshabbled, and they'd go in that. So, I don't know. Experience is an interesting teacher. Now, this is the point of dilemma. I'm not really sure whether to waste new wax, or my good wax, on these crappy old frames, because um, if we catch a swarm and then we have to jolly destroy it all, That'd be an awful waste, won't it? Tell you what, we'll just put a little starter strip at the top. Because these old frames are sort of pretty cool with the way they've wired them up. What do you reckon? See your bench stay tidy for five minutes.
things you do to try and catch a bee, honestly. But all these old moth larvae are all dead at least. And they've been treated a bit so the eggs should all be dead. Now we're just trying to decide how much wax to waste on this project. Well, it's not really a waste if we catch them and they're healthy. It's a terrible waste if we catch them and they're unhealthy. A little bit warm last summer, I think they got a little bit of a curvy edge. Anyway, we'll cut one in half. What do you reckon? Let's sit it in there and see what we can do. If you're thinking I'm just being a bit of a scab ass, you know, because I mean there's only one box, but we're doing about 20 or so, or you know, might be a lot more than that if we can have a good run. So I'm just trying to be conservative, but not be too scabby. So anyway, <laughs> maybe next year I'll be less scabby if, if we have big success. But we're going to be a bit miserable and cut them in half. What do you reckon? How do we hell are we going to do that? Any clue? Usually I cut them in half on my jolly wax installer machine, because which we might get to in a minute. We'll just do this bit first and see how we get on. Oh, look at that. Anybody think I was clever? Don't comment. Ah. <laughs> okay, I know that's a bit of a fantasy. That's nice, isn't it? God, spend your life raising the child and just laughs at you. Just laughs straight in your face. <laughs> you know, sometimes I could develop a complex hanging around with you. <laughs> just as well I'm thick skinned. No saying I'm thick headed, that's all right. <laughs> that's enough out of you over there on the camera. You said it for me. <laughs> I knew what you were thinking. Look, we've got three or four scouts wanting to get in our box already, and we haven't even got in the field. Oh, blooming hell, Harry. <laughs> They're keen, keen as mustard. So I've been using my little stencil to brand me boxes. Even got my little Bush Bee Man man on there, which is kind of cool. And I'm not really sure if everybody asks me what MBC stands for, it's only because it was my last choice and I can't remember on the drunken evening that I applied for it. Bloke should have just made it his initials, but anyway, that would have been way too sensible. Yeah, it could be my Bush Bee, my, anyway, doesn't matter. I'm sure someone will dream up some cool shit for me. I, anyway, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make up a little bit of an extra mount to have the blooming stencil held a bit easier because you hold that on the box and you get your blooming hands all covered in black paint. So we'll find out whether that's a good idea or a stupid idea. So my plan is I'm just going to cut some bits of wood and I'm going to put that so that I can hold that on the box. Where the hell the box is? Where's the box? So I'm hoping that I can actually hold the thing a bit easier like that. So I'm actually, having a thought about that, maybe we don't need to cut that at all. Maybe we'll just nail the bloody thing straight onto this bit of wood. That's not such a silly idea. <laughs> we might just stick it straight on there. And then it'll just be held there with that bit. Then I can get my pokey stick. Okay, hold that thought. We're gonna try that first. <laughs> I think now I'm on a different train of thought. I reckon I'm just gonna use, oh, one of these crappy top bars that I've got. So if I get one of them, just do that I reckon, because that other wood might be a little bit excited. So technically, let me do it like that. I reckon. That will work. And then we'll have a thing there. So we put, do you reckon we put two? Oh, and then we'll see if we can get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> yeah, if I've got a little tiny nail, that'll be the next thing. I don't know, I just don't like getting my bloody fingers all painted up. Well, I guess the worst thing that can happen is we'll just have to take it back off again. I don't even got the claw hammer to drive the nail in with so I don't get told off. Yeah. 
if you're doing this at home and you aren't constricted by time, go down the shop and get the right length nails. That would be a good idea. Oh, damn it. <laughs> that was a great plan, but it didn't work. <laughs> Shit, I snapped the jolly thing. Ah, poop. Right in a knot. Damn it! <laughs> Maybe we'll just try it like that. <laughs> Rightio! Anyway, if you're wondering what the hell that was all about, <laughs> normally when I've been branding the boxes, I had some cardboard on this jolly thing stuck on the edge of it as well. And that was all well and good for a little while, but that went to shit, so I thought, well, maybe I'll stick it up a gear. But of course, now a bright spark's made it for a left-handed person. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to spray paint with my left hand rather than my right hand. Maybe I've put them up there upside down. <laughs> oh, shut up! It's be hell, it's gonna be wrong. <laughs> oh, damn it! Ah, oh, it's gonna annoy the shit out of me. I can't have it like that. That will be terribly annoying. No! Probably should have checked that out before I bent them over to you, shouldn't I? Oh, come off it, bloody ruffian. Honestly, you weren't paying attention, lad. What was going on? It's supposed to save me from myself. Some enthusiastic beaver bent the bloody nails over. Ah. <sighs> Anyway, if you're following along at home, don't forget to make it for the right. If you're left-handed, if you're left-handed, this is a perfect instruction video. If you're right-handed like me, it's be a pain in the butthole. Uh, right. Now, if you've just tuned in, just remember to make it for your right hand. If you're doing this for yourself, I'll just throw this in the bin so you didn't know it happened. Of course, now when you're making a brand holding stick, you've got to consider the fact that you're going to want to hold the stick in your left hand, if you're left hand, if you're right handed. So you can spray with your right hand. Or if you happen to be left handed, you want to be able to hold it with your right hand so you can spray with your left hand. So just keep that in, in the footnotes when, you, when you're watching the instructions. Do as I do, don't do as I've seen to be shown. <laughs> No, what's that comment dads always make? Do as I tell you, don't just don't do as I do, do as I say. Something like that, I think that's the one. Do as I, do as I say, don't do as I do. Anyway, we'll try that again. At least I've got it on the right hand, so I can use the right, my right hand, and my left hand to hold it, my right hand to spray. Mind you, it wouldn't matter, but I suppose I just like to be this way around. We'll go out and we'll mark out a couple of swarm catching boxes and then on to the next excitement. Sometimes these old boxes don't like the new paint. But anyway, I guess you can make that out, can you? MBC. I was just thinking MBC could be Master B. Dunno. <laughs> what it goes with C. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was going to be my B company, but maybe it could be Master B Keeper, but it's the wrong letter. I don't know if you're a master. No, oh, I don't know about that either, but still it sounded good. Anyway, maybe I'll have to reapply and get a different letter. Change something up. Anyway, that's the plan. We've got our swarm catching box all ready to rock and roll. We're going to put our other frames in there, put the lid on, and then pop them somewhere to catch a swarm. We've got a few different spots. We've got some down, down a bit cooler country that is a bit early yet. And uh, we might even take a couple with us down the hills tomorrow morning. Pop a couple down there and see if we can catch some Adelaide Hills bees. <laughs> then I have to put that in me bloody records, where they come from. Stupid thing always asks me, what's the Queen's history? And I said, oh, well, I'm not sure it turned up by itself, especially when you catch a swarm. Anyway, there we are. 